Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on multiple companies and consolidation. So in Acumatica we have different methods to separate out your companies or your different entities and then consolidate them into your financials. So the first thing we'll take a look at is a concept called tenants. So we take a look at our tenant list and what this shows is different companies inside the same instance or URL. So in Acumatica, an instance is an installed application. So the way we translate this is either A, you can see your different companies here and you can switch between them. You can have different colors at the top so you can see which companies you're in. If I sign out, you can also see a drop down here that shows your different companies. And if we go back to our tenant list, each company has different data. So different sets of customers, vendors, GL accounts, GL account transactions, cash transactions, bills, invoices, inventory, everything is different between these different companies. Now there is an exception. If you host Acumatica yourself in a private cloud or on your own server, the ERP wizard, the Acumatica ERP wizard, does allow you to share tables in certain situations where it makes sense for you. But for the most part, these are different companies. Now, even though the data is separate for these different tenants, we still have the ability to consolidate these companies into our financials. And the way that works is under finance, we can set up a consolidation And what we do is we define the URL of where the instance is and what the tenant is. The tenant is separated by the username. So this right here, for example, is the tenant name. This is the URL. This is the password. We pull the data out of the source ledger, the accounting ledger, from this instance, this tenant, and we pull it into a consolidation entity in this particular instance, this tenant right here, company A. So we're pulling all the data in from here over to here. And then what we do is under our consolidation, our import consolidation data, we can process this, we can schedule it to occur every night, every hour, and this data will get pulled in to the ledger that we need it to be pulled into. And then the ledgers can be broken out into different columns in your financial report. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now where it relates to companies, companies are within the same tenant. So they all live and breathe inside this login under the company A. And they give you the ability to switch between, so revision to capital, revision to products, that's the one I'm in, revision to services, and all of these different branches underneath. So that's right, we can have branches underneath the companies. So if we take a look at the configuration here, this is our products company, and there's different options here. So the first one is no branches, meaning the company itself is a single company sitting inside of this tenant, no branches. The second is with branches, not requiring balancing. What that means is Acumatica has a module called Intercompany Branch, and it allows you to make balancing entries between your different companies. So you can configure the system based on the different chart of accounts to create the offsetting entries, the do to's and the do from's. And that's where we configure this. Otherwise, if we need multiple branches without balancing, we use this option. So this allows us to have different companies inside our current tenant and if we do have branches they can be configured here you can add your branches you can define which employees are allowed to get into this company right here you could define what ledgers are acceptable for this particular company you can configure your 1099 settings we can transmit 1099s electronically 
And you can also configure a visual appearance, meaning different logos for your site, different logos for your reports. You can even configure different colors for this particular branch. So that every time you switch between branches, you know which company you're in visually. Now the reason for using multiple companies within a tenant or using different tenants, separate companies to log into, separate data, is a fewfold. The first one is understand that companies share customers, they share vendors, they share the chart of accounts, they share inventory, inventory master, they share a lot of information. What they're used for is different accounting transactions. So every time we post a transaction, whether it's a receivable invoice or a GL journal batch, it is tagged with these different companies or the branches underneath them. So this allows us to help ourselves out with the ability to fire separate financial P&Ls or balance sheets or to consolidate all of them. So these are for financial purposes. Having said that, there are some rules. For example, you can have different cash accounts and lock them down for a specific company. So you do have control locking down some things and restricting them to certain companies. Now, the flip side of that is we require the same chart of accounts between these different companies. We also require the same base currency. So if you use multiple currencies in this scenario, in this company, though all the base currencies are US dollars. You can't have a default base currency of euros for two products and US dollars for two capitals. You can support multiple currencies, you just can't have the default base currency be something different between these. Lastly, we used to have a rule where the fiscal calendars had to be the same across these companies. But as of 2019 R1, we now support multiple different calendars for the different companies that you configure. Now having said that, the structure needs to be the same, meaning they need to be the same number of periods, same structure. They could just have different starting dates. So revision two could have a starting period of January. January could be period one, whereas June or July could be period one for revision two products. So you can offset your calendars that way. So there's a balance. If you use separate companies, you get completely different sets of books. You can segregate your customers, your vendors, your inventory. You could segregate all, even your users, you could segregate all of them into different companies and not share anything. So there's a balance between this. Now, what I would recommend you do is, you know, in addition to this video, to give us a call when you're ready to make this decision and we can help you go through your options. Acumatica does have row level security, so you can limit different users to different inventory items and different customers. So there are other things you can do, but there's a lot of moving parts. So it's difficult for me to say here that you should go with one versus the other without really knowing all the information and the kinds of things you're trying to do. So now, when we're ready to consolidate our financials, if we go to finance and we go to report definitions, you can see we have different financial report definitions. And if we take a look at this one, our P&L consolidated, what you'll notice here are there are different row sets, but there's different column sets. And this column set is unique to this particular report definition because it's consolidated. So if we open up this column set and take a look at it, what you can see here are the different column headings. So you have US year to date and our European year to date. And when we scroll down and we look at how that's defined, here we're using the actual ledger and over here, we're using EU Actual. So if you recall the consolidation, what we did was we configured it so that we're breaking up these columns by different ledgers. And when we configured our consolidation, if you recall, one of the companies, the source company that we we're drawing information in from, 
was getting put into this EU actual ledger. But that's not the only way we can do it. If we wanted to, and let's say we're using companies instead of tenants, this is a configuration of the different tenants because our consolidation was pulling from a separate URL and bringing into this ledger. In another scenario, notice our data source could be a different company. So capital products and services, that's the company. And then if we select products, for example, we also have branches. So these are the different branches that are part of this company. So we can segregate our column of information based on the company or branch and show only the accounting data we want for that particular column. So if we take a look and run this report, You can see Acumatica is bringing up our revenues and our expenses, cost of goods, and everything per this particular column. This is our actual ledger, as you recall, from the column configuration. This is our EU actual ledger, and all of those transactions flow here in order to create these balances. And then you'll notice here, I have the ability to add these up so if we go back, you'll notice that there's a basically a, a simple formula. This plus this equals this column. And then we have our period to date. So in this case, it was January period to date for the actual ledger and the EU actual ledger. So if we jump out and take a look at our ledgers, Here are the different ledgers. This is a reporting ledger. Again, we're dumping this data in from our consolidation. But additionally, inside our actual ledger, we have all the different companies. And those companies are producing transactions into the different branches. So if we take a look at our account summary inquiry, you'll notice here, we'll just push this back to 2019. So you can see the transactions that have occurred. Now, at the top of the screen, you can see product retail. But if we keep switching this around, you'll see all the transaction data by company or branch. No data for capital for 2019, January. Services East, Services West, you can see all the data. So Acumatic is keeping track of all our transactions by ledger, by company, or branch. And again, when we go into our financials, our report definitions, we have the ability to break this up in the column. Or what we can do is ask the end user to pick the ledger every time they run, or pick the company every time they run the report. So if I save this and I run it again, now you can see these options are being asked of me. I'll turn those off. And then the last thing is, if we go to our typical profit and loss, you'll notice there's a unit set. If we open that up and look at how it's defined, you can see we have a tree view that we've configured here. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at products, you can see that products are configured to show these particular lines under products, product retail indicates this is the data source, starting branch, product retail. And the wholesale is looking at product wholesale. Same thing down here under services west and east, we're pulling these data sources. So why do we create a unit set? Well, because it looks like this. When we run it, Here is our typical P&L. And at the top of the screen, we have this button right here. These are our unit groups. So what this lets us do is we can highlight the branch or company that we want, and Acumatica will quickly recalculate this report for us based on the tree view. And if we want to, we can go to print all or run the consolidated. So this gives us a lot of flexibility to create a tree and pull the data that we want 
out of the system. And you could see the unit sets, they're not restricted to just the company. You can also define maybe specific ledgers if you want to, or different chart of accounts, or specific account classes. There's all sorts of options you have here under this data source. So that's it. That's multiple entities and consolidation. That's a very quick understanding of it. There are many different directions you can take in setting up your company around Acumatica or Acumatica around your company, configuring multiple tenants, configuring multiple companies or branches, and then configuring all your financials to report on them. So if you have any questions, you're trying to make a decision on how to set up your company, feel free to give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and have a great day.